To most Americans, the question over who their employer is seems to be an obvious answer. It's the person who hired them, the one who signs their paycheck. As a former labor attorney, I can tell you it used to be very clear in legal terms how you become someone's employer. But that's no longer the case since the National Labor Relations Board stepped in. Many people would be shocked to find out that some company they've had zero contact with is also considered their employer, in addition to the employer that actually hired them, signs their paycheck. Now, we all agree there are times when two or more employers should be deemed joint employers. Before the NLRB stepped in and overstepped, there was a common sense understanding of the circumstances establishing that joint employer relationship. Both employers had to have, quote, actual, direct, and immediate, close quote, control over the essential terms and conditions of employment. That standard made sense. But today, business owners and their employees face a standard vastly different and far more confusing. They face a situation where a group of unelected bureaucrats in Washington are interfering with their relationship in a way that has created a lot of problems. The NLRB's decision, the Obama administration's actions that followed it, in addition to a litany of rulings by activist judges, have inserted a great deal of uncertainty and confusion into the traditional employer-employee relationship. Two completely separate employers can be considered joint employers if they made a business agreement that, quote, indirectly, close quote, or, quote, potentially, close quote, impacts their employees. Indirectly or potentially. What does that even mean? It's vague and it's confusing. Think of it from the employee standpoint. There shouldn't be any room for question on who their employer is. As for employers, they should have the clarity they need to look out for their employees in the way the law requires. Because in order for employees to have strong protections in the workplace, it needs to be crystal clear who is responsible for providing those protections. If everyone is, no one is. We are here today because we are determined to provide that clarity once and for all and protect jobs and small businesses in our communities. I'm proud to say that three of our Democratic colleagues, Representatives Correa, Queller, and Peterson, are co-sponsors of the Save Local Business Act, and we hope to continue to build bipartisan support so we can restore common sense to the joint employer issue.